Welcome to ATL Day Ones with Jarvis and Tanitra. Coming up on today's show, if Derek Carr is the best quarterback in the division, I think the Falcons have a chance. And it looks like Marcel has found his mojo. So does that mean the double A should start taking calls? And last but not least, and for the culture, this needs to be talked about. That's all coming up next right now on ATL Day Ones. Let's go. This is ATL Day Ones, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. And it starts now. I want to start off by saying thank you for making ATL Day Ones your first listen of the day. Remember, we are free and available wherever you download your podcast and wherever you download your podcast. Make sure you leave us a five-star review. Really appreciate that from you in advance. It is ATL Day Ones, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of ATL Day Ones is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get Start it now. <clears throat> we know the Atlanta Falcons, T, they did their doggone thing as far as making sure they were aggressive in the offseason when it comes to free agency and all the additions that they had on the NFL draft. And we, we um, when they went to the NFL draft, excuse me, they, we know that they drafted B. John Robinson, T., and we understand what the expectations are when it comes to their offense. Like we talked about it on the show as far as being 25 to 30 points. That's where they need to be in order for them to be successful and, and have a chance to win the division. But did Terry Fontenot and Arthur Smith do enough? Yeah, I feel like they have. I mean, and of course, we know that they've even gone out and gotten another resource, if you will, another weapon for – uh, Desmond Ritter and a guy we all are familiar with, Penny Hart, who played here at Georgia State. Georgia State, And is yes. quite the speedy guy. So interested to see what he'll bring to the table just as another weapon on offense, but of course special teams as well. But yeah, I think that for those individuals who may have thought, okay, did he do enough because he went with Bajan Robinson with that eighth pick? Well, he jumps up to go and get Matt Robinson. People think, or Bejron, excuse me, people think Clark Phillips III is going to be sneaky good. And then you couple that with all of the signings in the offseason of a Calais Campbell and a Jesse Bates III and a David Onyemata, and we could go on and on and on, right? And if you look at it as a collective, you can pretty much say that he's done enough because, again, if you say, what are the gaping holes, left guard? Well, there you have it, gaping hole. If you Mm -hmm. say front line, gaping holes, fixed for the most part, right? So I feel like... He has done enough. Here's the interesting part, though. As I was looking at some of the rosters and the depth charts for the other teams in the NFC South, they're decidedly, everybody kind of went the same direction, by the way, because everybody needed some help on the edge. Everybody needed some help in the trenches. And with the exception of the Falcons, everybody else needed a quarterback. So it's going to be interesting to see, to your point, I think it's a to be determined because yeah. if uh, if everything is equal, right, if everybody else went out and got themselves a quarterback that could contend with a Desmond Ritter, because you would assume that David Carr is going to be at least somewhere in the ballpark of what Desmond Ritter can do, yeah. Bryce Young is probably going to be that guy sooner rather than later. We don't know what the heck is going on down in Tampa. That's another story. <laughs> Kyle Trask, yeah, okay. So maybe they're the weakest link. Maybe they're the weakest link. Yes. But yeah, I thought it was just interesting when, when I looked at the other pieces that the other three teams got. I said, you know, I think on paper there's there's parity. On yeah. paper, there's a little bit, there just may be pieces, like you said, Absolutely. where I would still give the Falcons maybe the overall advantage. Like we just said, the Bucks have a gaping hole under center, right? Uh, The Panthers, yes, they have Bryce Young and they went out and got him weapons, but he is a rookie. And so we don't know how long it's going to take him to hit the ground running. David Carr, well, okay, you just never know which David Carr is going to show up. So that probably. Or his brother, Derek. (laughs) 
I know it's hard. Yeah, they look, this, it's, you know, Derek they, a little bit better than right, David. Absolutely. I give him a little bit more David, credit for Derek, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like they are to me. That's they a are like bit spi- that Spider Man meme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're the Spider Man meme. And, and, and that and that was my point too that I mentioned earlier because here's the thing. Like a lot of times, like I even though I like to dig a little, I I like to have a I like to say that I have a bachelor's degree in football team, but but I am a simple man. You know what I'm saying? I don't ask for much and everything like that. So I kind of look at football the same way. Just look at the quarterbacks. I think you can make an excellent point. Derek Carr, Kyle Trask, or or Baker Mayfield. They brought Baker Mayfield right. in there. Like right. who cares? It, it don't matter who which one Spider-Man is in there. Me. I feel the same way about both of them. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Spider-Man, man. We still have been looking at them just like that. And then you got Derek Carr in New Orleans, and then you got a a, a number one overall pick in Bryce Young. Yeah. So and teams who have the number one overall pick and need a quarterback, more than likely, they don't need help elsewhere. So they brought in Jonathan Mingo, you know, as a wide receiver. You know, they brought in DJ Johnson, the edge player out of Oregon, you know, uh, to help with that that, uh, that line of scrimmage. And we, I'm, I envy Carolina's line of scrimmage, especially specifically on the defensive line. Derek Brown is an yeah, absolute I man. Yeah, that's, 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 <laughs> like, saw so. that up front last season. So. Right, so we we understood what Derek Brown did. He took souls last year against the Atlanta Falcons. Just go check out the tape. It's there. <laughs> so I, I think right now, you know, uh, with, the, with the whole quarterback situation, I feel like the Falcons have a really, really good chance – of making some noise in this division because, mm-hmm. like you said, they they were the the most aggressive. Like a lot of a lot of pundits, a lot of people, including us, believe that they, they would have probably been the most aggressive team in free agency. So yeah. when you bring in a guy like Bijan Robinson, and like I said, the expectations are twenty five to thirty points a game. You have to do it, and they and it's right. not like that's something crazy to be asked because they averaged twenty five points at home last year. Yeah, you know, um, with. Desmond Ritter and a hurt Kyle Pitts and all that stuff. Yeah. And Marcus Mario there at quarterback. So, like, yeah, I really, I think I've, I, I really feel like the Falcons have a really good chance of doing this thing because starting at the quarterback and then just going down up in the roster as far as the additions that they've made yeah. in this spring. Yeah. And I also think there's continuity in the coaching staff that right. favors the the Falcons maybe over those other three teams, right? I mean, Saints, for Absolutely. example, we took, we, we snatched Dennis your soul Allen? with your, with your DC. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so Falcons snatch your soul with your DC. So I yes. think that mm-hmm. all of those pieces coming together, also one of the benefits or one of the advantages that Bajan Robinson has is having someone like a Cordero Patterson, who his style is somewhat patterned that way, meaning that he's really a hybrid more than anything, you got right. a guy like that who can tell you how to bring that hybrid into the space and make it successful. And someone in Arthur Smith and Dave Ragone who were able to finally get Cordero Patterson to show the special player that he was as opposed to kind of gimmicky with some of those other offenses, offenses he'd been in. So I do think Bajan Robinson has an advantage in having the coaching staff that he does. And I also think that con- that continuity is going to prove very, very helpful for Desmond Ritter as well. So I'm going back to my guy, going back to Desmond Ritter and saying that could be your X factor that's above and beyond for all the reasons we just mentioned, because he'll have a real running game right out of the gate. He's got continuity in his coaching staff, and he also has continuity in his weapons in a wide and a wide receiver and tight end room. And we already know that Chris Lindstrom and others, even Ritter himself, I believe, have spoken about the importance of the continuity on the O-line. So I keep coming up with things. So you're right. <laughs> yeah. That's what that's the more what, you that's stack what, it, the more it looks yeah. like. Yeah. yeah. Like that's real. Like yeah, that's real. And if they go, you know, uh 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 a seven and ten again, like hey, like Okay, like that, that's those aren't weren't my expectations, and yeah. something happened during the, during the season that that we didn't see coming. Because when you like you said, when you look at it, lay it all out, and put it out on the table, I, I really feel like the Falcons can um, be able to pull this thing off. And I'm glad that you brought up another point too, with with Chris Lindstrom and uh, and Arthur Smith and, and and just this coaching staff and Jerry Gray and Ryan Nielsen. Yeah. One thing that I've always appreciated about Arthur Smith, and I recognize this very early on, he's always going to put his players in position to succeed. And when you have a guy, a, 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 a your head coach, 
and your offensive coordinator doing that on a consistent basis and the players understand that as well and they see it and they experience it, it could mean nothing but good things for the Falcons coming up in 2023. Now, good things have been happening for Marcel Ozuna. How about that? <laughs> he no longer has a zero in front of his batting average. Should Alex Anthopoulos start working the phones? We'll talk about that next. But first, this episode is brought to you by BuiltAdot.com. Because guess what, guys? You know you know your boy, T and I, we've been doing it. We've been doing our thing. We've been working out each and every day, getting a sweat on, doing our thing in the workout room. Guess what I do? Or guess what I go grab before I even walk out that door? I do this before I even take my pre-workout. For all my people that hit the gym, you know what time it is when you hit that pre-workout. Got to have it. I got to have my protein bar to go along with that because – I get my energy with my pre-workout, and I get all the proteins and everything that I need, and I get a little bit of sugar, too. How about this? 100% real chocolate popping off in that thing. 17 grams of protein popping off in that thing. So, yeah, go to built.com and check it out. We know we've been telling you to go to the website to go order. Now, you can fall off in the Sam's Club. You can go to the Walmart, and guess what? You know? I'm a big man. You know what I'm saying? I know y'all can tell. I'm a big dude. So I want to get the big boy box. Oh, I'm going to Sam's Club. But if you're not a big guy like me and you want to get a little small package, get the four-bar uh, four bar pack, go to Walmart. They got it right there for you. So head to built.com or go to Walmart or Sam's Club to get yourself a built bar. Yeah, and it looks like someone had, I don't know if it's a built bar or if there's some type of energy drink or something going on at Lone Depot Field, but whatever it is, yes. Marcel Ozuna had a bite of it and said, I'm about to go. Ooh, because Come this is now. a guy who has 10 hits on the season and two runs on two home runs on the season. A third of his hits came in that game <laughs> last night. <laughs> about a half of his hits came in the series and right. both his home runs have come in oh, that God. game last night. Now, granted, this yeah. is a familiar space to him, right? But yep. to give him a little credit, he's been slowly tink tinking it and warming up, warming up to get to the point of a grand slam last night and then coming back with a home run in an absolute mauling of the Marlins that the Braves did 14 to six again, six home runs, seven runs in one inning, just crazy, crazy. But there are two guys actually that we talked about, well, so we'll talk about Marcelo Zuna. There's one guy that we talked about yesterday that I just want to mention really quickly before we go into converse, conversation about Ozuna, and that's Austin Riley. We were just mm, saying yesterday yes. that he'd been quiet for a yep. couple of weeks, and all of a sudden, lo and behold, he smacks the heck out of a ball last night. So it was really yeah. good to kind of see him make that kind of contact, if you will. But Ozuna, it's like, okay, good. Keep this up because you know what this is? This is like a showcase introducing yes. who Marcelo Zuna could be if you would like to take him. So is it now time for Alex Anthopoulos to start accepting those calls for Marcelo Zuna? I think he should make them. <laughs> I'll take a step, for, he can a make step them, further. Yeah. yeah, make those phone calls and see what's going on. Gouge interest because here's the thing. We know that. Marcelo Zuna is a hot and cold type of guy, right? You know, and more so cold for, you know, yeah. <laughs> ever since Last he's two been and a half years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, he's been very, very cold. So, if this is the beginning of what I think it could be, because, you know, like, he had a zero in front of his batting average, and now he's over one, uh, yeah. over 100. So, you know, that's that's, that's progress. You yeah. know, bless, yeah. his, bless his little heart. So if, if this is the beginning of what we're going to see, not saying that he's going to hit two home runs for every time it, uh, Brian Snicker runs him out of there, but I, I, I do believe that Marcel Ozuna is the type of guy that is starting to get his confidence. If he has his confidence, he's going to play well because he's talked about – how he understands why the, the the fans are doing treating him the way they are as far as from the booing and all that stuff. He he listens to that stuff. He understands it. He's a human being. So I get it. So and for him to have the experience of seeing that ball fly off the bat, 
out and fly out of the yard um, t- two times, um, twice last night, and, and, and be able to get on base and score runs and everything like that and, and get that zero off in front of his batting average. But a lot of people been dwelling on that. I know. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen y'all tweets. I know how y'all get that. I know the vitriol that y'all have for Marcelo Ozuna. I understand it. And, and But I think that as he as this as we go along in these next few games keep an eye on Marcelo Ozuna because if the dude starts to get hot Alex Anthopoulos is a smart dude I wouldn't be surprised if he already gouged interest T because that's just how he thinks if this dude catches fire I promise you he will be up out of here because as the the Braves get healthy I, I, I think that you know, you have Travis Darno come back. I don't want to see Sean Murphy come out of that cleanup spot, regardless of whether he's catching or DHing. I want him to stay exactly right where he is. And then with Ozzy Albies doing his thing in that five hole, yeah, I I like what I'm seeing right now with this um, with this lineup without Ozuna in there. So the the more the better he can play. The more Alex Anthopoulos need to start making them phone calls because if this dude go, goes on a run in, in the next seven or eight games. Man, make it happen, Captain. Yeah, and Travis Darno was really good in that DH role before he went yes, down absolutely. for injury. So him coming back, slowly making that progress, if you will, it does kind of let make me say, make Let me add to that, sense. T2. Let me, can I add to that? Um, with him being in that DH role, the, there's a less – chance of him you know having another you know contact or 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 a collision with the player because we know these concussions he's been struggling with you know he's talked about how he's been struggling with this concussion piece because like there's no timetable on this thing because there are so many things with the symptoms and, and with what teams are doing nowadays to make sure these guys are really okay when they come back like he has to go through that process and he talks about how difficult that's been so him just standing at the plate hitting the rock and if he can hit that mug out of the park every time and not have to worry about running into nobody, hey, the more, the more that'll be great. <laughs> Indeed. And, yeah, it's one of those situations where there are some backs, back and forth, up and down, in and out. And we saw it last night. Had a little scare. The good news is it was just a scare with Michael Harris yeah. the second, yes, where he's running yes. the first base, and he literally just trips over the bag for all intents and purposes. And so he was mm-hmm. pulled from the game as a precaution for him, but of course, not before he said bye bye with the ball. So we appreciate the fact that he yes. was still doing MH2 things before he was pulled from the game as a precaution. Unfortunately, not so much of luck with Kyle Wright. He is going yeah. back to the IL, the 15 day IL at a minimum. So that'll definitely mean at least one start. He's going to be gone, maybe even two starts as well. It's one of those things where he looked like his mechanics were off, but it was kind of tough to tell exactly what it was initially. And then about that third inning, you see the pitching coach come in, then you see Snick come in, and he yeah. was determined. Like Kyle Wright was going to try to hang in there, right? But Snit was like, what are you doing? Like, why am I here? A rhetorical question, of course. And then he basically tells him, you're not going to pull yourself, so I'm going to go ahead and do it for you. And everything was fine from there. Braves went on to do their thing. And, of course, in putting him on the IL, they decide between the guys we talked about just yesterday, Dylan Dodd and Jared Schuster, Schuster, they decided to bring Dylan Dodd up for the series finale. And side note, not to talk about it, but I'm going to have to make a side note. So grateful it's not a businessman special. It's a 410 first pitch. Braves might actually sweep this thing. It's not a 12 o'clock pitch. Not a noon, not a one o'clock first pitch. Braves might actually win today. But whatever they do in this next 15 days, they're going to have to do it without Kyle Wright. But are you concerned about this from a long-term standpoint? Or are you okay because there's confidence to bring Dylan Dodd back? And by virtue of what Bryce Elder was able to do, getting going seven innings that rested your bullpen so that if you have to pitch a bullpen game, the backside of this game, you still feel comfortable that you've got pieces in place and a strategy to be OK. Should Kyle Wright actually take a little bit longer than expected? Two things, though, the, 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 as far as the, the long term, long term concern. Yeah, I'm concerned. I'm concerned because, like, he was dealing with this coming into to spring training. Yeah. He got the cortisone shot in his right shoulder, yeah, right shoulder. and then yeah. that right shoulder. And so, and he was talking about how he didn't. It wasn't necessarily in the shoulder. It was kind of more so on his back 
part of their shoulder and i'm just like uh that's not good <laughs> um yeah. and and then when you immediately put him on a 15 day diet il because a lot of times when you go through this process if it's a matter of hey let's go see get some imaging first mm -hmm. let's go do that and then of course they you know went through all that process but when they immediately put them on put them on like that like that's never a good sign in my mm -hmm. eyes so i think that they put him on IL to uh, further evaluate to see like what's really going on. And I hope within the next couple of days, we don't get any bad news. So yeah, I am long-term concerned uh, as far as that. And also I'm not interested in no bull, bullpen games right now T. like I'm just, that's just me. <laughs> like, you know, and given where the bullpen is and, Colin Hughes starting to come around. My guy, the say, you mean AJ Venter? <laughs> yeah, the rest yeah, of the bullpen yeah, is fine. Yeah. AJ Venter and, 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 and low leverage Kirby. Yeah, I want to keep low leverage Kirby yeah. in low leverage situations. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah, those are those are what the Braves have to work with right now. And I think right now, if those guys can stay in their roles, in those roles. Uh, the, the the better the better I feel watching Braves games. So yeah, I think overall I am a little concerned with, with the. I think I feel like in the next seventy two hours, you know, we'll, we'll be able to understand like if 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 it's anything that can come further from that fifteen day IL de un, um, designation. But but hopefully it just uh, remains that because yeah I don't yeah I don't I, a twenty one game winner is a twenty one game winner team like at the end of the day. Yeah, here's why I'm not concerned or okay. as concerned as maybe you are. I don't want to say not concerned, but just maybe not as concerned. So when I said bullpen game, meaning the backside of that, because I do expect okay. Dylan Dodd to gotcha. at least take him through five innings, but you may gotcha. need the bullpen to come through on um, four innings. And I think they'll be quite fine because they had that rest, thanks to Bryce Elder. When I think about what Alex Anthopoulos can do, if, we, if we're having this situation come up twice for Kyle Wright, and we've only gone through about 30 games, if you will. That gives Alex Anthopoulos a lot of runway to go out there and get somebody. And we've seen him be able to do that with the proper amount of time. So that's why I feel like, okay, well, not that I want him to go back on the IL for the same thing that was ailing him before. Right. But if we're going to have this happen, let's have this happen on the front side of the season. Because yeah. Alex Anthopoulos can then go work the phones to try to get somebody to come in and make sure that he's got – a person who is going to be viable to be a part of that rotation. So I think it might just be one of those timing is everything situations that make me feel like, okay, if anybody we can, if we can trust anyone to kind of mitigate this or navigate this, then it would be him. And I heard something interesting that Grant McCauley said today, our guy who's of course locked on Braves. And he had mentioned on uh, 92 nine, the game about Mike Soroka. And he said he was still comfortable with the fact that, yeah, Mike Soroka had a not so good outing the last time he was out. Oh, but yeah. the good news is that the Braves must still feel confident enough not to have to rush him back. But he still feels like at some point we're going to be able to see him and we're going to see him to be be effective here at in the majors. But he likes the fact that, hey, they're not rushing Soroka. So I said, okay, you kind of put those three pieces together. It makes me a little less concerned about what's going to happen. But if you have a concern every day, just let us know. What are your thoughts? When you heard the news last night that Kyle Wright had to exit the game in the third inning and that he's going to be on the 15-day IL, did that make you concerned? Let us know. Or if you guys think for some reason that despite – what Jarvis and I have said about the NFC South, that somehow the Falcons are not the favorites and don't have an edge, drop that in the comments as well. Or send us a DM. You see our tweet, our Twitter handles. Go ahead and send us a DM there as well. And keep watching. We really, really appreciate you guys checking us out on YouTube and, of course, wherever you download your podcast. But it wouldn't be fun if it was just a party with you guys and you didn't tell other people to come join the party. Yes, come join the party. Why don't you be come? a part of the family by becoming an everyday or please drop it in the comment box right now. If you're everyday, -er, go ahead and let the folks know what time it is. But T, this is for the culture. It is the intersection between sports, entertainment, the culture, and sometimes whatever the hell we want to talk about. And I think today is probably ex exemplifies that to the T. Now, you mentioned – the, uh, before the end of the show yesterday, um, how there was an active shooter situation in Midtown, um, uh, down there where 
you, where your other job is, um, and uh, how there was uh, all the things that was going on with that. And uh, Dion Patterson is, is the young man that you know uh, shot shot up the uh, hospital, Northside Hospital, right there in the front desk uh, area. He was with his mom, and 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 I think that one of the things that always kind of comes up with this particular situation is a lot of people start to dwell on certain gun laws and all that stuff T. but we're not going to def- definitely not going to talk about that. But I think that the one thing that we probably need to do in this particular situation, given that it's mental health awareness month is acknowledge that piece of it. Right. And, and I think the young man, you know, obviously was going through some things, but it is just so hard right now to fathom that we are, kind of used to this like used to being in these situations and i and i don't think however you feel about whether politically or whatever i just think it's just that's just not a good place to be in yeah and that is a mental health crisis the fact that this is something that affected us a little bit but most of us just kept on being about our day-to-day yesterday to be honest with you and don't get me wrong probably more so living in New Jersey than anything has always had me watching my back. So I'm always watching. And of course I go to work at the crack of dawn. So I have to be very, very careful about my movement. Right. But yeah, we really have to understand again, taking the political piece away from it, taking away bits and pieces that we still may not know as even our local law enforcement is trying to piece it together. But from what we know, it almost sounds like this guy was in a psychosis, basically. And he felt himself going into the psychosis and was trying to do something to mitigate it, couldn't. And then it just completely goes off the rails for him. Not excusing it, just saying that it is clear that there was some, there was definitely a mental health issue going on there. And what I can appreciate is the fact that we have Mental Health Awareness Month that is getting so much attention Unfortunately, not in that space, but in spaces where people are proactive about it. I think about some of our athletes like Kevin Love or Calvin Ridley, who've spoken very candidly about some of their mental health challenges, whether it's anxiety, depression, panic attacks, or what have you. And these are the types of conversations that you have to have. Like you wish that he would have had a conversation with someone sooner, the active shooter, right? Yeah. And would have caught or someone would have seen signs earlier to say, hey, before he goes to the point of psychosis where there is no return, because there is a point where you can't pull yourself back because you had a break with reality. Hopefully there are people out here who understand. Make a phone call. Make a phone call. If you call the suicide hotline, for example, and tell them that you are about to harm yourself or you think you're about to harm others, there is someone who can help you with that. So I think that there's the other piece of that is that unfortunately a life was lost four other lives are hanging in the balance but it does remind us of the importance of mental health awareness and dare i say it as well especially for men being okay with saying i'm not okay i give you a great credit and a great shout out for posting or taking to social media a couple days ago and just you know missing your mom in that moment but acknowledging it And being okay with it. And then respectfully, so many of our other black male friends and colleagues putting positive comments in the comment section. That's where we need to continue to evolve ourselves as a society so that it's perfectly okay to have these conversations because guess what? It is better to have a conversation about these things and try to figure out how to mitigate it, whether that is you going to a therapist, a coach, your pastor, or getting some medication because Hormonal imbalances are real. We just have to start acknowledging it and dealing with it so that maybe, maybe we can mitigate these kinds of situations that just at this point, like you said, it's almost like we don't even feel it anymore. It's almost like we're just numb to it and you don't want to get numb to it. You want to realize, no, no, no. If we get numb to it, it's going to keep happening. And we've got to do something about that. And and I think as a black man in today's world and growing up as a black man you know that didn't that didn't, that, that, that never changes and we don't address it we don't address our feelings we don't talk about our feelings we just say hey man suck that junk up no uh-uh 
Like, I, I, I've reached a point in my life to you where I'm okay with being vulnerable. You know what I mean? Like, because that's, that's another a little stigma, right? Like, nope, uh-uh, you don't know, supposed to show no emotions. Like, I can count on probably one hand growing up seeing my dad cry. Like, and yeah, that's, that's how I felt yesterday because – Today is actually the 10 year anniversary of me getting the call when my, uh, and finding out that my mom had passed because she was in hospice. And I was, it was on a Sunday, Sunday morning. I'll never forget that day. It was a Sunday morning. It was uh, very misty outside. And uh, I was working at 929 and I was running the board for it. And I got the phone call from the people at the hospice uh, facility and I just had no idea. Like you would have thought I probably had seen a ghost by the time I hung up that phone because, and, and I'll never forget um, my man, uh, Naughty Dread, who, who was working. He was sitting right there, just so happened to be up there. And, and I was just like, man, I don't even remember what I said to him, but he was just like, okay. And he felt, he, he said, he filled in for me and I immediately got out of there and I just rushed up to the uh, facility to you know, uh, you know, just, just see what's going on. You know, check check in on everything. What's going on, with my mom? So, but yeah, I, I really feel like if you all don't learn anything today, like by watching this show, whether it be Falcons, whatever that, yeah, that stuff. We love our sports. Don't get me wrong. We appreciate you guys for coming here. But if you don't learn anything today, like make sure that you, you check on your folks yeah. and, and, and acknowledge your feelings because. Like I said, there'll be times where I go, I'll go a long time without thinking about my mom. But and then if I do, I'll try to avoid it and say, no, nah, you know, snap out of it and all that stuff. But yesterday I was just like, no, nah, man, I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to embrace yeah. it. I'm going I'm to I'm cry. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to cry. That's OK. And that's OK. So, yeah, I, I think that, you know, these situations, we need to not say get used to them and then. Once we stop getting used to them, address them for what they are, the situation where they are, and, of course, acknowledge the people that lose their lives in these particular situations. But we also need to understand, like, there are some things that are in place that can possibly prevent people committing these crimes. You know what I'm saying? And not necessarily mean that talking about the gun issue. We ain't got to address that. If we address the mental health aspect of these, of these particular situations, I think we'll be okay. Definitely. All right, guys. Well, that's it for today. And we appreciate you guys for rocking with us uh, throughout the entirety of this show. Um, and thank you for making ATL Day 1 your first listen of the day. I remember, y'all everydayers, you guys have been rocking with us and checking us out each and every day. We appreciate you. We love you. Um, continue to do so. And if you don't, why don't you go ahead and join the party? And last but not least, if this if this is not fitting, you know, on any other day of the show, I think it is fitting today. Make sure you guys share love, show love, and most importantly, spread love.